Jake, we are back for Baseball Friday, September 29th. One last time for the 2023 season. And then we're to the playoffs and no shows to the playoffs. We'll hit all of that content over on Dub Club. Again, that link's in the show description. Jake, how you feeling last show? I mean, it's like I told you earlier, I think it's bittersweet. It's been a great baseball season, being profitable, but it's got to come to an end at some point. And then that just means we're closer to basketball season. And that's just my happy place. Yep. We're, uh, it's been a wild month for me personally. September's always crazy <clears throat> trying to finish up baseball and then do all the football stuff uh, that we got going. Uh, Jake, you, you pulled off another winner here on Thursday Night Football, of <laughs> course, for those people uh, watching the football show. I mean, you just rock and roll in there with the Thursday Night Picks. Uh, uh, it's been hot and not the way I expected it to happen, but it still happened. So I'm, I'm just as happy. I have, to, I have to point out really the models gotten pretty low on the Packers uh, coming into today. And uh, what you saw today, I don't think it's a change your mind on that, uh, that opinion. Uh, heading into the weekend here, just a couple of quick reminders about how baseball works this weekend. It, it does not work such that the team that needs to win will win. Are you sure? Um, I'm sure of it. Um, some of them will, and some of them won't. Um, the books have tended to overreact massively in these situations. They overreacted last year, and we got, I just, there were just so many big edges on the board, and we won so many of them last year on the last day of the regular season. Even this year, the day after the teams have clinched, where the teams aren't playing their starters, the books have overreacted. We got the Phillies earlier this week, the day after they clinched. And in a day, they didn't start all their players. But, I mean, the the, the probability changes are small um, in these games. And the books act like it's 10 and 15%. Or I say the books. I mean, it may not be them. It may be that they know how the money's going to react and how the market's going to react. So they're just reading the market. So whatever it is, whether it's the books, the market, um, it's not to say a team that needs to win can't win. It's just saying they aren't guaranteed to win. So just as a reminder, we still want to look at getting good prices. And my hunch is... If you're looking at a team that needs to win, it's probably better to fade them or pass because you're probably going to have an inflated price and it's probably not going to be worth it. Because I know in recent memory, if you've, if you've just backed all the teams that needed to win at the prices, you've lost so much money. And so don't know if that'll hold again, but that's just a reminder. We're always still looking at prices here and we can adjust the model. Uh adjust our probability or our thinking, whether it's a model, like I have a literal model or a mental model, we can adjust for these things, but we shouldn't do too much adjusting, which I think is a perfect segue to the first game, Red Sox Orioles. Orioles just clinched the AL East massive for them. First time in the playoffs since 2016, they're off celebrating. They're going to be definitely hung over the next day. That's the way this goes. doesn't mean they can't win <laughs> this game. Um, we're not here to talk about uh, aside that we're here to talk about the total. I don't know what the lineup will be for the Orioles. I, I am projecting a normal lineup because that's how the system's built because that works 161 out of 162 times. <laughs> so I haven't built for this one-off scenario, but we do know the Orioles potentially could give some guys a rest here on Friday. Um, I'm not sure how that'll work, especially with the day game Sunday. You're not going to want to play all your starters necessarily Saturday, Sunday with the quick turnaround. Um, and then the fact that they'll have a bye for almost a whole week without baseball. So uh, they might have more starters play Friday, Sunday, or I don't know what they're going to do Friday, Saturday, and then have Sunday off. I mean, they, they got a lot of options here. Bottom line for me is that the model's projecting 7.8 in this game. And that's kind of its upper bound in that if the Orioles have any of their good bats out, that number's only going to drop. You've got a pair of decent pitchers here, Nick Pavetta, who's just quietly had a solid year, and his XFIP actually makes you think he might could do better than he's done. John Means, again, we've talked about one of the best pitchers, uh, you know, for the Orioles, probably the best pitcher for the Orioles for a couple of years, having all the arm concerns, injuries, et cetera. And now he's back 17 innings in the season. His underlying metrics are very concerning. It's a small sample size, but I'm not exactly convinced we're back to normal John Means uh, at this point. Uh, you know, models kind of trying to hedge its bets and say, I know what I saw from this guy before. I know he's been out. I know it hasn't actually looked great. I know he's got a 260 ERA, but the FIP and XFIP are around six. So, but it's not a big enough sample size to really make the, the model for it. So it's kind of trying to interpolate all that into that number there of 97, saying it's giving him an average. Um, great. Of course, you've got decent bullpens. Okay, offenses. It's just a run-of-the-mill type game, but we nailed 
the total of the day over on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and then, of course, tweeted out or posted out or X'd out or whatever you want to call it, the, the link for that to everybody and dropped it the Discord as well. So making sure everybody got access to see that we had a first five B grade total of the day on the on the under in this game. And what I said on that was chilly night wind blowing in is going to make it hard to score runs in that ballpark. It's a similar situation here tonight on Friday, mid 60s. Wind will be blowing in not quite as strong, more like five miles an hour than 10 in from left rather than right center. I kind of like the right center better because it kind of eliminates home runs to that part of the park. Any wind blowing in from left really takes out, hitting home run out <laughs> to left field with how deep it is in the left field. Uh, it's just going to play pretty pitcher friendly here on the weather, and that's why we're on the under eight. It's a C grade pick. Uh, not the biggest value, but again, this is an upper bound that 7.8. If the Orioles don't have any of their bats in the lineup or the Red Sox don't either, which could come definitely happen. You don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, the, uh, the lineups are only going to get worse. They're going to get better. So there might actually be a little bit more value in this than the C grade would imply. Jake, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, I was going along with the Orioles might be a little hungover, which means those bats might be a little slow or they might be rested. I think we're going to get that total dropping towards closer to game time. So I was hop on it here, get a little more value. Uh, I think it means is still going to be going out there and going for it. Like they want to get him worked in for the playoffs. So yeah. I don't, I think the pitching for on both sides here is going to be still at the, the top of their game where I think the offenses are going to might be taking a night off rested hungover, However you want to look at it. There's just more ways that offense doesn't show up on a chillier night with the wind and the and in a pitcher friendly park, I just see this game going pretty pretty boring. Watch three to three yeah. to two, something like that, and get going home happy. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right with that. And and there's a really good chance that when lineups are posted, uh, there's a really good chance this drops a little bit. People like us kind of taking advantage of that, thinking about that angle, looking at the weather, there's a decent chance that this is seven and a half before lineups are posted. But if it's not, there's a really good chance that once lineups are posted, it drops to seven and a half. And uh, so we've got that push protection in case it, you know, accidentally does get to five to three, which offers us some extra value. So yeah, absolutely like our heads out there. And, and again, we talk about the player celebrating might be hung over. That's going to lead to some maybe weaker hitting. Uh, the one guy who's not going to be celebrating quite as hard and hung over, I have to assume it's John Meats because he's a guy who really needs to impress in order to, I mean, at this point, make a postseason roster, be trusted in the postseason, whatever exactly his status is. I mean, he's really on the fence there, and they know that he can do it because he's done it in the past, but he they, they want to make sure that his results are there uh, before taking a valuable roster spot on him and or putting him in a tough spot. So he really wants to go out there and show that, obviously. Um, and so, you know, him not being, you know, either literally or figuratively hung over is a nice little perk for us as well, knowing that yeah. we know he's going to be um, on it. Whereas the hitters, you know, hey, you play 162 games. Like, you ain't going to have it every game. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. Like, that's just life. Um, so under eight there in Baltimore, which takes us to 7, 10 p.m. Eastern. Phillies at the Mets. Um, Jake, I feel like a couple of pitchers you've got a round or two deep with in fantasy here. Um, yeah, Tywin Walker. <laughs> Tywin Walker, uh, but pretty okay. 435 ERA advanced metrics are a little bit worse than that. Done a decent job. I, I don't think, you know, he's a guy who's been hurt for a long, long time. And I think if you, um, you know, if you're a Phillies fan and you knew this is what you get from at the start of the season, I think you'd say, that's fine. You know, we got some other guys that can eat some good innings and get and pitch really productive innings. He's done very admirably. Tyler McGill, on the other hand, is a guy who's a younger, was a younger guy having a couple of good starts a couple of years ago, but just hasn't really been able to get it together. Injury has been part of the problem. Just terrible performance has been part of the problem. Just hasn't been able to stay consistent. 492 ERA and the advanced metrics say that's who he is. He's not a good pitcher. You would expect an ERA around five, maybe benefited a little bit by the pitcher friendliness of that park. Uh, which actually just makes that 492 ERA a little bit more discouraging uh, for him. We're going to win the Phillies here at minus 117. Uh, they're still playing hard. They're not going to win every game, obviously. But I mean, you saw what happened with Bryce Harper. You know, he's still fired up, wants to win baseball games, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, you know, I, I don't have any concerns with them. You know, mailing it in or anything like that. Model says they win 57 percent of the time. Uh, so minus 117 is a B grade. 
Jake, minus 116 is the A grade. So if, if people are not paying attention <laughs> to the show, there this is basically an A grade. I mean, this is literally I have to I have to code in something. And yeah, there's, there there's a, a line drawn code. somewhere. There has to be a line drawn somewhere, or else you literally and like look, honestly, look, people. Nine times out of ten, you should not use a slippery slope argument. It is not a good argument. It is one of the weak – if you were to rank the arguments that you can make in persuasion, it's one of the weaker arguments, right? It often leads to absurd situations, right? So it's not a strong argument. This literally would be the slippery slope because I literally just have to draw the dang line somewhere, right? You yeah. can't – you know, and so, uh, yeah, it's it's technically B++++, plus plus plus, but I think this is a great price. I saw this one. I was hoping you would choose this one when we were looking at our options. I was like, yeah. I really hope we choose the Phillies like – and this is price like they're, you know, it's better, barely better than a coin toss. I think it's a, a little bit more than that here. I, I like the Phillies here. Uh, this Mets team hasn't been that impressive. And, and you look up and down it and it's hard to see where the Mets can have an advantage. It's probably not going to be with the bats. It's not going to be on the hill at the start of the game. And it's not going to be on the hill at the end of the game. So it's not to say the Mets can't win. Uh, but you got to like the advantages Phillies have up and down the board here. Jake, what are your thoughts? Yeah, like the Phillies better team, obviously, with looking at the record. I uh, got the better pitcher because McGill, oh, I, th- I was really encouraged by him those first couple starts when he was young, and then oh, that's why mm-hmm. I cut him Same. off my team. Uh, but okay. either way, Ty Walker has done fairly well, better, a lot better than I expected him this year after being yeah. so hurt. I just think yeah. the Phillies are so hot right now, and the last thing you want to do when you're hot and you're feeling good like this is to not play. So I think uh, – I think as long as that's going, they're just going to keep going and keep going hard because it's just fun when everything's going right. Like they kind of yep. have it going right now. I mean, it's just hard to not play. It's like, like when you're shooting basketball, you don't want to end on a like, you don't want to end on a miss, but you, you right. typically you shoot till you miss. Like it's just yeah. one of those kinds of things. And I think that's what we're going to get out of the Phillies. They're just going to keep hitting the ball, and the Mets are going to have a hard time here. Yeah, absolutely. I think my biggest concern with the Mets here is that uh, they still haven't finished the Thursday game as we're recording this, it's in the ninth inning. And yesterday, cousin and Jared, cousin Jared and I gave out under seven and a half at plus odds. And there's been three runs and we're in the ninth inning. And I'm like, just in the dang game because totals, Stop. if you don't get 27 outs, it doesn't count. And so I'm like, you got to finish this thing. You can't just, you know, you can't just go home, finish the game. Uh, that's my biggest concern with the Mets right now. So we'll see if we get, if we get a push or a win on that one, that'd be a very unfortunate push. Um, you know, if it, if that were to happen, but yeah, this Mets team, uh, they've played spoiler a little bit in September. I'm not writing them off and saying they're terrible. I mean, their bats are still okay. It, the issue is they traded away most of their pitching and that's why they haven't done as well since the break. They didn't do well earlier for whatever reasons, the injuries, uh, underperformance, et cetera. Right. But once you get past the break, I think their performance has been about what you would have expected from them, which is they're a very subpar team that's traded most of their pitchers away. Like, what did you expect? You know, they've won a few games. They haven't been as bad as like the Royals or the A's, but they're not a great team. The Phillies are playing really well right now. Uh, and like I said, a huge pitching edge with Talon Walker against um, Tyler McGill, who I, I believe has a brother with the Brewers or somebody else. And so I, you have to, it also starts with the T. So you got you to keep these guys straight. And these, all these brothers. Taylor. No, that's Taylor Rogers, but there may be Taylor McGill too. I don't know. Yeah, there's a Tyler Rogers too. It's, it's too many, too many brothers with T's in the big leagues right now. Uh, last game of the night here, 7:40 p.m. Eastern. Padres at the White Sox. Uh, again, I feel like you're trying to out uh, total cousin totals here. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, cousin Jerry be a little jealous that you're getting some good total action here. Uh, this is an interesting one for the Padres. I've got Avila listed as the main starter. He's the better of the two, according to the model. He's the guy that I think is going to throw more innings, but I'm not that confident in this. Nick Martinez is going to open. He was a starter. He was terrible at it. They put him in the bullpen. He wasn't good at that. They put him as a starter. He was terrible at it. They put him in the bullpen again, and he was actually kind of okay. And that's where he was most of this year. He wasn't that bad. Offered some promise. Maybe finally living up to the potential because he was a guy who was hyped for a couple of years. Um, now they've been kind of opening him a little bit, stretching him out a little bit as the season's kind of worn down for them. I'm expecting him to go like two or three innings and Avila to go like three or four, but there's a lot of variance there that I'm not really sure exactly what's going to happen. It's similar to that Baltimore situation. The upper bound of the projected runs is eight in that I'm projecting Avila to go as long as he can go. And he's the better of the two. If Martinez goes longer, making Avila go shorter, 
that doesn't really help. And if he goes longer and the bullpen doesn't go longer, that doesn't really change anything. So the projected total in this game is eight. But if Martinez throws a little bit more than what the model is expecting, it really would be 7.8, 7.9, something like that. Again, kind of an upper bound in this situation. The White Sox bats aren't anything to write home about. And Dylan Cease, I think quietly here at the second half of the season, pitching respectably. He's not pitching at that Cy Young caliber that obviously the White Sox fans and, and fantasy owners would have wanted to pitch at. His ERA is not pretty at 466, but he's lowered his peripherals down to pretty respect. Marcus Fipp is 379, and that was after a really rough start to the season. So I feel like he's been pitching relatively well here as the season's wound down. The White Sox bullpen is the only hold your breath moment here. They are truly terrible. The first five markets aren't out yet. So while we're going to go full game under eight and a half, it is a C grade. Take note, the first five projection is four. You might be looking at splitting your bet. You might be looking at going under four. Just check out the first five market as well. Something to peek into uh, just to avoid that that bullpen situation and, and then be done with it. I still think the under for the full game makes a lot of sense. It's going to be about 60 degrees in Chicago. Ball's not really going to fly. Wind blowing in from left field at five miles an hour. It's it's a very pitcher-friendly night. So I still like the full game under, but but peek at that first five and just see if you're getting some value there as well. I'd be going under I'd be going under four and a half for sure. I'd be going under four as long as the odds were in the even money-ish or better range. Uh the 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 odds get a little bit more crazy in those first five because you're, you're, it's like hockey. You're jumping at bigger number. Every number is a bigger jump in, in five innings of baseball. So something to keep an eye on, Jake. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I mainly don't trust the White Sox offense to give us much or anything, uh, yeah. especially with some decent pitchers going for the Padres. And then they, was, they, they won they won for us as an A grade on Thursday, scoring all of three runs. <laughs> it was like I mean, it was crazy that they won like, three runs. I mean that, that was and that was enough to win because that's kind of their like that's like the best their offense can do, right? Yeah, that's that's about what I'm expecting. And I don't think Cease is going to give up a, a lot. So I really like the first five aspect of this. Uh, the bullpen is the scary part, but I'm hope I'm hoping we get a good game out of Cease. Don't see a lot of the bullpen. Keep the scoring down. It can end four to four to three for all I care. I just I don't think there's going to be a lot of White Sox offense we have to worry about, and the Padres offense hasn't really been there all year consistently. Don't think we're going to get a good night out of them. It's important to note here if for whatever reason this were to get to nine, the quality of this pick jumps to a grade level and you say that's quite a jump but i would say yeah but the problem that push protection on nine offers a lot of value i say a grade it's a grade level as long as it's not nine like minus 130 or something absurd like that um so that's just something to take note of i don't know where the number's going to go i don't see why it would go to nine i think it should be more likely to go to eight but you never know where the number's going to go so something to keep in mind if you do see a nine at reasonable price odds that offers a lot more value, but I'm like you as well, you know, still liking that first five. Something also to talk about is the weekend here, this last weekend happens. We have no idea how long Dylan Cease is going to go. And that's going to be true for every starting pitcher who's pitching for a team that's not in contention. And it's going to hold for every starting pitcher whose team's already wrapped things up. Zach Allen's on tomorrow night. He's been up and down as of late. So that's a whole other issue you got to think about. But aside from that, if he's pitching well, the Diamondbacks are going to let him go seven innings because they're trying to win the game, secure their playoff spot, right? The Astros are trying to as well. Same with JP France for them, right? You have those teams in those situations. You saw today the Mariners throwing Kinta Maeda out of the bullpen for multiple innings. And you're like, oh, like, you know, at some point I, I that was probably announced. I, 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 been so focused on why I might have missed it, but it might not have been announced. And if so, it wasn't when was it announced? That sort of thing. But you know, you got a little bit of a shorter start from Sunny Gray because they want to make sure they're getting these guys work and setting them up for you know next week. So things are going to get weird. Um, last start of the season, Dylan Cease could go out there and throw four innings, seventy pitches, four shutout innings, and you know six strikeouts, and then be like, "That was great." Like I want to end on that high note. Or he may say, I want to throw a complete game today. Like you have no, I have no, no idea as a blanket. You have no idea. Obviously that's, that's the benefit of Twitter, right? Is finding beat reporters who might have this information. So if it's out there, sometimes it'll be out there. They'll say, we're only throwing a guy a certain amount of innings. We're using this guy to the bullpen, et cetera. You might learn something. But other than that, we have no idea. Sometimes the guys go short. Sometimes the guys go long. We're just assuming it's going to be normal because that's what we expect. We just know there's a little bit more variance with starting pitchers this weekend. 
which takes us to our pitcher prop of the day, Dylan Cease, under six and a half Ks. Just talked about that extra variance. I'm not saying I think he goes long or he goes short. I'm not really sure. Ignoring all of that, this is a really, really high plus expected value play. According to our friends at Outlier.bet and just according to like my brain, I don't really know why we're getting plus odds on this. Sent this out to the Discord already earlier tonight. Said, hey, y'all run, don't walk, like plus odds on this. Um, and you can see it's at DraftKings at plus 115. It's just absurd. He's gone under this number, um, what, you know, 58, I think, percent of the time. I think that's on my my next letter here. 56% of the time. He's gone under this number 56% of the time. Um, also of note, the Padres um, on the season have the sixth lowest strikeout rate against right-handed pitchers. In the last 30 days, the fourth lowest strikeout rate against right-handed pitchers. Padres aren't striking out a ton. You have the extra way you could win, which is it might be a shorter out, outing for Dylan Cease. Obviously, if that's the case, it does hurt our under a little bit, right? We don't necessarily want that, but it, we, you know, even if it's a longer outing, um, getting to seven Ks against this Padres team isn't necessarily going to be an easy thing to do. He hasn't done it uh, overall. Of like, I I think there's good expected value here because people are confusing the difference between a mean and a median. And that's a, that's a understandable mistake. If you haven't been in my stats class, you know, in a long time, but the mean is a right skewed distribution, which means it's heavily influenced by outliers. And you see some of those outliers on the screen, 10, 10, 10, 11. Some of those really high numbers are pulling that mean a little bit greater than the median and the median here strikeouts a little bit lower, um, making people think six and a half is a reasonable number. He might, you know, can get to seven, but he doesn't get to seven a lot, even if the average might be a little bit higher, but average doesn't matter. We don't care about what the average is. We care about what's the probability he gets to this number. Um, I, I'm, I guess it seems like the Padres. I'm shocked that we're getting plus odds here. Uh, Jake, you have anything to add to this one? I never, I really nailed all the points I was going to talk about. The Padres, not a big strikeout team, especially against right-handers. See, uh, he's not a big strikeout guy. He's had some really surprising outings. Like cut that 11 one really kind of shocked me in the yeah. tens. It's just not it's not his typical game. So I thought this was like when you said run to it. I did probably put this on it because I love plus plus odds of this under yeah. six and a half here. And, and Cease is in general an overall a higher strikeout guy, um, but it I I think and there's no locks in gambling, right? We're not saying that. You know, this absolutely hits. It's the plus odd offers a ton of value on this. But on top of that, um, the 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 probability that he gets a seven or more is just greatly higher against a different set of teams. Uh, namely, half the teams he's faced all season in, in the AL Central. You know, you're playing the Twins, and obviously the Mariners aren't in the Central, but the Mariners, right, these sort of teams strike out a lot. Yeah, you have a lot better chance of getting even through seven. And, and that's where people start doing the laddering bets and, and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's going to be a lot harder. Not to say it, it's impossible, but a lot harder against this Padres team to do it. Um, even if he goes seven innings, while seven innings would probably lead you to think he could get seven or eight Ks, that would be against an average opponent. That's not what we would expect. That's it won't happen. That's what we would expect against this Padres team. So again, plus 115 odds here um, on Dylan Cease. Under six and a half Ks, you see all these fun graphics, uh, color coded, which is nice to just help you see it real quick. You know, green, good, red, bad. <laughs> it makes it real nice. Um, Outlier.bet slash professor, seven day free trial. Uh, just, we got to start incorporating some of these player props into our football stuff. I, I think we just got to remember to do it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, now that baseball's slowing down, we got a little more time to <laughs> pull that stuff out because. Typically, we've got a lot going on, but with baseball slowing down, we get a little more time. We can look into things a little bit more. You know, it's it's a great time to you just mention this with basketball, like kind of on the horizon. I mean, we're a little over a month away at this point, but uh, you know, with that being the next big thing we do, we'll still be doing our you know we you know multiple football shows a week. Um, but it, it, baseball is such a grind. Every day is so similar. You do have those random days with like three or four games. But that's just like a weird thing, and it's almost like even more confusing to get out of that rhythm basketball basketball is just a different grind. It's like this up and down grind because like, especially into the new year, the Saturdays are just insane. And then you have like a Monday or a Friday with like eight games and it's like nobody interesting playing. And you're like, I don't even have to pay attention to that. I'll just like, whatever happens happens and I'll, I'll win or lose some bets and then we'll check it in the morning. Like it's not a big deal. Yeah. Then uh, it's just, uh, it's such a different 
type of grind that college basketball season and baseball season is. It is, and I, I love it because I watch the. I love those Fridays when there's like seven games and they're just these random small directional schools playing each other, and that's just <laughs> where you get these crazy, crazy college basketball plays. Yeah, or, or you get like the Ivy League games happening on Friday night is always you know those type of things are always fun too. Watching watch some of those. Um, all right, Jake, that's our recap. That's our last YouTube baseball show. Uh, of this season we'll be back next year for next baseball season but we'll be back before that with college basketball and we're always here uh in the interim with football until that uh it comes to a close so jake parting words for the last time for baseball on youtube here 2023 man it's been a blast I've, it's been very profitable playing along with you here with all the a grades and all that it's been a lot of fun got my bankroll built up for this whole college football thing not no, no, to try to manage college football and college basketball. That, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yep, absolutely. And again, all those eight great plays for all the sports sides and totals, all the playoff baseball stuff on Dub Club. The link is in the show description. You can click it. Uh, it's also there on the screen right there on the bottom right-hand corner. So lots of ways you can get there to Dub Club and get all sorts of good information for you. Otherwise, though, thanks for watching all baseball season. We'll see you on football. We'll see you in college basketball. And we'll see you in 2024 for more baseball.